by Dr. Frankenstein scouring the countryside for body parts. I scour thrift stores for camera parts. Then I take them apart, I rip them apart, and I make new ones. I'll show you how I made this one. I started off with a Holga, which is a great camera to start off with because it's easily hacked. It's really easy to unscrew the, uh, the lens and the shutter, and it comes right off and you put your lens in your shutter. And be careful, the, uh, the shutter switch falls out pretty easily and you can lose that. That's always annoying. And then you've got a shutter and this opens and closes and it's, you know, you can focus it and everything, but I wanted to put a bigger camera back on it so that I could use longer film and make more panoramic images. So I went down to the thrift store, grabbed this thing, which is a, um, it's a bellows camera from the olden age, and these are more and more available as digital cameras become more and more popular. I found this at a thrift store for maybe $10, and it's basically, it looks brand new. And then I just went ahead, these are bellows, and I didn't need those, so I just ripped those out. Now we've got a huge area here for the film to be exposed in. And because this, this lens is closer, it's more wide angle, and it'll show more, it'll be more of a panoramic view. Let me show you how the film gets loaded in here. Here's the back, and I've got some film here, and I just put this right in here, and then I'll spread it across here, and I'll feed it into there. Now you can see that there's sprockets here, and those sprockets will be exposed, which will end up looking really cool on the photo. Now, if you're interested in, like, super realistic photos, this project is probably not for you. This this, all this stuff, making your own cameras, kind of abstracts the image a little bit, and so you should be prepared for really, you know, accidents and interesting images and the unexpected. The next thing you need is something to go between the camera and the lens, because the lens is too small, it would just fall in there. So I went ahead and I made a little piece out of basswood. Now, basswood is something you can get at a hobby store, and you can actually cut it with an X-Acto knife, so it's really useful to have around, and it's great for um, mocking things up if you ever have to do that in your workshop. And in this case, I just went ahead and I mocked this up, cut it out, and I'm all set. I put black tape on the back here so that nothing would be reflective inside the camera. And now I've got my shutter and my lens, and I just need to tape this all up so it's firm and it'll stay there, and then I'll tape on the lens and shutter. Okay, I've got it all set up. I've got it all light tight, and I've got some film loaded in it. I'm going to use slide film because that's what I have hanging around, and I'm just going to end up doing what's called cross-processing which means even though it's slide film, I'm going to have them develop it as if it's regular film and it'll make the colors kind of wonky and cool. Okay, waiting for the film to develop for right now. Let me show you some of the other cameras that I've hacked up. So this is some weird camera that I found and then I went ahead and I modified it and I put a, um, a large format shutter on it with a Diana camera lens on it. And this one's actually focusable. You can see that I can push this in and out to focus it. Here's another Holger that I modified. This one I just put a um, I put an underwater camera's close-up lens on it, which makes for really some interesting aspherical effects. You can see all this area is not in focus, and only the center is in focus. I like that. Okay, time to go pick up some film. Er, there's not enough light outside, and barely any of an image showed up on the negative here. You can kind of see there's a little bit of an image there, but it's just barely there because there was not enough light was shined through the camera to make a difference on the film. Okay, I'm going to hope for, um, for some sun tomorrow. This is a trial and error process. There's sun outside. I'm going to go get it while it's there. Okay, I've got a good feeling about this. I think I've got some good pictures in here. Now, the next step is to get them out. I've got a what's called a changing bag. And what this is, is it's a bag with two zippers on it. And what you do is you put your camera in there, and then you've got these armholes here. And you can stick your arms in here and open up the camera without without fear of exposing the film, wind up the film into the little film housing thing, and then I can take that, get it developed, and see if there's anything on there. The next step is to go to a place like this, the Photographic Center Northwest, which is a place where you can rent a darkroom for about $10 an hour, and they've got all the chemicals and stuff all set up so that you don't have to mix any of that, and it's great. I really like working in a dark room because, well, it's dark, and you get to use, you can get twist knobs and make everything look perfect and then you have to put it in chemicals and, and the image just happens and it's chemicals so it's kind of like magic. Okay, here are some flowers that are in my neighborhood I went, that I went out and took a picture of and they're kind of on their last legs because it's fall. I like that you can see that the, uh, the sprockets are there and the picture just goes right over them. Now here's another one, this is a street sign in my neighborhood and this turned out really well. I like the way that it just sort of fades out here and how long and panoramic the picture is. 
I'm, I'm liking this. Now, sometimes accidents are the best thing that can happen to you in photography. And here's an accident that happened to me. I, this is a multiple exposure where I accidentally I took a picture and then I took another one without um, without cranking it. And so there's lots of uh, there's lots of horses here and it looks kind of crazy. Okay, uh, I'm Bree Pettis and you've just watched another weekend projects. Before I sign off, though, I want to show you some really cool photographs of some people who've been making projects inspired by weekend projects. Let's check them out. Here's the first weekend project video that I did. It was I made this workbench and I designed it in SketchUp and a lot of people actually organized and made this themselves and then even made modifications. Here's one that's all organized and here's one that was made a little bit shorter for to fit into a certain space. And here's one with a cement top that was made so that this thing could hold a uh, an aquarium. I think it's awesome that people took my design and changed it up and modified it and made it their own. If you've got a weekend project that you've made that you want to share, make sure to put, about, put it up on Flickr in the Make Flickr pool. And um, if possible, I'll try and put it on the end of another weekend project video. Okay, go out there, have some fun, hack up some cameras, and have a great weekend.